Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Zainab and I am here with you with Muslima Media Channel. And today's story is about Sumeya bint Khayat. And Sumeya is also one of those special firsts. She was the first martyr in Islam. But I want to tell you a little bit about Sumeya's backstory. So try to envision for a few minutes the environs of Mecca, right? And you might have already heard the story of Khadija, how Khadija comes from a very elite background. And Khadija um, financially supports the Prophet wasallam. She is the first person to believe in the message of Islam. Sumeya comes... Uh, also with, I think, a strength of faith that is comparable to that of Khadija's. But Sumeya comes from a drastically different background. Whereas Khadija anha, comes from the elite, Sumeya was a slave woman, and her husband was also enslaved. So Sumeya, if you think about it, being a slave woman in Mecca during this time ensured that Sumeya was going to face a very harsh set of social conditions. So when you think about the fact that Sumeya was willing to sacrifice everything in the name of her faith, that makes her story you know, even more inspiring and even more amazing. Now, her husband was Yasir ibn Amir, and their son was, was, uh, was Ammar ibn Yasir, right? So she is known as uh, Umm Ammar, and like I said, Sumeya was a slave, her husband was a slave, and after they had uh, Ammar, it was said that their owner might have freed them, but at any rate, she and her husband and her son, for that matter, were still treated by the elite of Mecca as basically people that they could victimize at will, right? So one of the things that we read about in the story of Sumeya is that she and her family, for example, because of their faith, because they boldly proclaimed their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they rejected the polytheism, the idolatry of the Meccans, because they said that Muhammad was, was Rasulullah. The Meccans were determined, sadly, to make an example of them. So they would drag them out into the desert un, under the heat of the burning sun. It was said they would actually be sort of like encased in iron armor and be placed in the burning sun, essentially to sort of burn alive. So these are the sorts of things that they went through. They were publicly beaten and whipped and humiliated. They were taunted. And again, the Meccans were able to do this because Sumeya and Yasir and Ammar didn't have the recourse that, say, others would have had. So the Prophet wasallam, we know very much that the Meccans wanted to torture him, but they were prevented from doing that because he was still under the protection of Abu Talib and Bani Hashim, right, his clan. Abu Bakr, for example, one of the earliest Muslims, but he did have the protection, right, of his, of his tribe, for example. But because Sumeya and Yasir Ammar were unaffiliated with, you know, with, with a clan or a tribe, they didn't have that particular level of protection. So the Meccans were sadly able to subject them to all sorts of brutality, but they never wavered. And what's really interesting is that the story, when you look at the family, the mother, the father, the son, that you see that of the three of them, Sumeya's faith was the strongest. And because her faith was the strongest, she was probably tortured the most. Abu Jahl himself, who, as we know, was an inveterate opponent, an enemy of Islam, would personally torture Sumeya. Um, and he was the one that actually ended her life. Um, as we know, he actually um, takes a spear and he stabs her through her abdomen and kills her. And Sumeya, according to the account of Imam Ahmed, literally becomes the first person to die in the way of Islam. I mean, imagine that a woman who is a slave, who has no clan or tribe, that, that makes a very powerful statement, I think, in the environs of Mecca, that this type of woman is willing to kind of like sacrifice her life for this religion. And these are the people who were coming to Islam. These are the people who found empowerment and upliftment and dignity in the message of Islam. It was people like Sumeya, the oppressed, the poor, the downtrodden. This woman was so strong in her faith, it was said that even as Abu Jahl would beat her and humiliate her, that she would defy him by smiling. Right? And by invoking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every time he tried to get her to say the names of the idols, she would say the name of Allah, Allah the one. And in his rage, he killed her. 
And you know, Samaya's story really just really does stay with us because her strength is kind of is it really is transmitted to those around her. And she is memorialized from the very earliest days of Islam as being one of the first Muslims, indeed it was mentioned that there were only a handful of people in that time who dared publicly announce their Islam. They were the Prophet himself, peace be upon him, then Abu Bakr, then um, Ammar, then Sumayya, then Bilal, then Suhaib, and then Al-Miqdad or Al-Khabbab, depending upon the narration. So for Sumayya to be in the company of those people is amazing. And the Prophet wasallam said to them, that he told them, be patient, be steadfast. Verily, you have been promised paradise. And indeed, Sumayya is one of those people who was promised paradise in the very early days of Islam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us just a measure of the courage that Sumayya had. So this is Zainab with Muslima Media. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, this is Zainab and I really hope you enjoyed the Muslima Media channel. Make sure that you follow us and subscribe, but most importantly, make sure you get the word out there about why this channel is so awesome and much needed. It is going to fill a critical gap in the online content produced by Muslim women scholars. It's very important that the woman's voice emerges in today's Islamic discourse. So make sure you follow this channel, make sure you tell your friends and family about it, and make sure you support Muslim Women's Scholarship for Women, by Women, Muslima Media Channel. Thank you.